Radio Al Ansar Podcasts. Business Matters. The title suggests many things. The important issue is the world revolves around business, society, organizations, individuals, and even religion survives and thrives because of business. Business has to encompass not just financial commodity and service transactions. It has also to include welfare, justice, empowerment, environmental, and other issues too. Every week, Business Matters will delve into aspects of business that impact our lives. We will seek out extraordinary and ordinary people who have done extraordinary things, facilitators, educators, and entrepreneurs will be invited to inspire and enlighten our listeners. Join Anwar Mullah for an interactive show and find out what really matters in business. نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 19 minutes past 8 on a Tuesday evening it's the 20 what's it 20 Third of uh, February, and you on business matters. Min- business matters brought to you by the Minara Chamber of Commerce. It's me, Anwar Mullah, in the studio, and back in the studio today with me after an absence of a week is Imran. Imran, assalamu alaikum. Wassalam and uh, lovely to be back in studio. No pressure this evening. Well, lots of pressure this evening, Imran. Yeah. You be interviewing your ex boss, uh, and with that, let's introduce him, uh, a man that's uh, got an. a very very high name and a, a, an outstanding name in the investment industry and tonight being tomorrow being budget speech and also reaching the end of the financial year we're talking to Mr Abdul Davids from Kakiso Asset Management and he's going to be talking up to us about tax efficient savings options uh, Abdul um assalamu alaikum and welcome to Radio Al Ansar Waalaikum salam wa rahmatullah anwa and Imran and good to be back with you unfortunately not in person but uh, nonetheless uh, good to be part of the show tonight Abdul uh, thanks for joining us from Cape Town uh, I think eagerly anticipating and looking forward to the budget speech tomorrow We're going to be speaking to Yasmin Suleiman next week on the show about the budget uh, she joins us every year Yasmin uh, from Bowman's attorney is going to talk to us next week about the budget but Abdul tonight we're going to try to see how, see how you can save all of us some tax by putting money into tax efficient savings options Yes uh, I think if one can start with uh, the the most common ones and the ones that probably give us the the, the best opportunities to save on tax uh, it's probably what we would call uh, retirement fund contributions So uh-huh. these would be retirement and annuity or pension fund uh, and provident fund contributions. Uh-huh. Uh, and fortunately for most taxpayers, the uh, government has actually increased the allowances. So okay. it used to be about 15% uh, of your taxable income. Uh, it's now up to 27.5% uh, of taxable income that you can actually uh, deduct from your, from your uh, taxable income uh, in terms of contributions. Uh, subject to a maximum of 350,000 rand. Uh, but that only kicks in for those uh, fortunate enough to earn over 1.2 million rand a year. Um, so most people would be able to get the full deduction in terms of the retirement fund contributions. Uh, in particular. Okay, so Abdul, to, to put that into perspective, if, if I'm earning 1.2 million rands a year, I can put up to uh, um, 350,000 rands into a retirement yeah. annuity. That will bring my taxable income down to 850,000. So I'll pay tax on 850,000 as opposed to paying tax on, on 1.2 million. That's exactly right, yes. Okay, excellent. So the retirement annuity I would imagine is for individuals that have their own businesses and uh, are, are, are paying themselves a salary or earning a salary from their from their companies. But people that are working for companies that are contributing to to pension funds, provident funds, they would also qualify for some tax relief. Yes, so most of those people would also if they are already making contributions to uh, retirement products, uh, they can they have the option to top those up. as well. Okay. Because if you look at what uh, most uh, employers and employees with a structured uh, would have been around the 15% deduction. Right. So given the changes in the tax laws at the now for 27 and a half percent deduction, most people actually have leeway to increase their contributions by a further at least 12 and a half percent. Um so I would definitely use that opportunity to to top up uh, retirement today. The reality is that uh, the, the ultimate purpose of saving should be actually for your retirement. Right. Uh most people in, in South Africa has a chronic underinvestment uh 
for retirement savings. Um, I think partly because of uh, education, but p- partly because of the needs uh, of our society and uh, you know our working population. Uh, most people, you know, do have financial stress and uh, are in distress sometimes, so they don't have the luxury of saving significant amounts for retirement. And uh, clearly, as we know, uh, by under saving now, um, it's a bitter harvest when you reach retirement age and you do have to have access to funds. And a good rule of thumb is to try and save uh, to a point where uh, you can get out at least 75% of your final salary uh, on retirement. Okay, wonderful. Abdul, would I be right in saying that that the earlier in life you started saving, the better chance you have of reaching that goal at the end of the day? 100%. Uh, the earlier, the better. And, um, you know, for somebody that's uh, starting at uh, age 40 versus somebody that started at age 30, it makes a huge difference in terms of the quantum of, of savings. And, and it's a good old factor what they call compounding, the compounding effect. Of, start, of having a 10-year head start is obviously quite significant in terms of uh, your ultimate uh, returns uh, as well. Mr. Davids, jumping back to the, the retirement fund contributions, so this is obviously you're getting a tax deduction, which means it's obviously supported by government. What is the rationale for these government-supported saving vehicles? A very good question, and, and it's an important question to answer because uh, I think it speaks to the heart of, um, you know, the dysfunctional uh, state that we are in. And that is, as I've mentioned earlier, there is a chronic undersaving in the country, or dissavings as they call it. Uh, and it is important because ultimately, uh, as we know, I mean, government do pay social grants, etc. But uh, the fewer people that are dependent on social grants when they are pensionable age, uh, the better it is for government in terms of making sure that, you know, uh, you know those funds can go to the really needy uh, of society. Uh, and more importantly, I think by having a culture of saving, you actually build up a stock of, of capital that can be deployed uh, into more avenues to generate economic growth. So uh, an established culture of saving for retirement, you know, creates significant uh, capital uh, stock in terms of savings pools. And that allows, you know, more efficient deployment of those capital to grow the economy as well. Speaking of using uh, retirement funds or to grow the economy, one very well-known uh, example of this is the PIC. But recently there has been some talk of uh, touching private uh, retirement funds to, for infrastructure projects as well. Uh, would you like to comment on that? Um. Yeah, I think it's, it's an important discussion to have, uh, and it's really coming down to, um, you know, the mechanisms in place. Uh, in the past, and, you know, there's been a lot of talk of what they call prescribed assets, where government might force us, uh, when I say us, I talk about private pension, as you've mentioned, uh, to invest, for example, in ESCOM debt or uh, to fund uh, struggling SOEs. I think that is very unpalatable for private savers because, uh, as we know, uh, bailing out an SOE uh, is not the best use of capital, for, for especially for, for hard-earned savings Absolutely. of uh, individuals. So I don't think we're close to that at all, and uh, we're unlikely to see any form of that. Um, however, if there are infrastructure projects, I think there's an exciting pipeline of renewable energy projects uh, that are available. Those would be highly return generative, um, and I think that would be perfectly fine for private pension funds to actually invest in as well. Okay. Abdul, you spoke about the retirement annuities, pension funds, which are, which are used as tax savings methods. And um, we're coming up to the end of February, so this would be the right time. If anybody has any money to invest into these type of things, they would have to do it before the end of this week or Friday being the last day to qualify for tax relief in this tax year. Am I right in saying that? That's perfectly correct. And I think uh, very importantly, um, once the tax year is over, uh, any uh, savings falls into the next tax year. So uh, you literally just have this this year. If you haven't used it, it's a use it or lose it. Uh, then obviously new contributions falls in the in the next financial year or tax year, as you put it. Okay, Abdullah, a, a more recent introduction is the tax savings account. You want to talk to us in a little bit about that? Yeah, I think this is uh, probably uh, what should excite our listeners the most because uh, it's by far the simplest, easiest, and most cost-effective way uh, to not only start investing, uh, but also to really save on tax in a significant way. 
the reason I say that is that uh, effectively your entire profits and, and capital gains that you make on tax-free savings accounts are totally tax-free. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, let's just first talk about the, the, the format of the tax-free savings, or the TSA as we call sure, it, yeah. uh, tax-free savings accounts. Um, so government introduced this a, a couple of years ago. Again, uh, to Iran's question on the rationale, it's basically to make it more conducive and uh, attractive for people to save, um, mainly for retirement, but also just save in general as well. So how it works is that uh, initially uh, one could save uh, 30,000 rand a year. Uh, that ratchets it up to uh, currently about 36,000 rand a year, um, with a maximum lifetime contribution of about uh, 500,000 rand. Okay. So uh, certainly I think for most of our listeners, uh, that is still a, subsi- a substantial amount to be saving, 500,000 rand over roughly about a 10-year period. Uh, so your contributions are kept at 500,000 rand. But really the magic of the TSA is that uh, let's say you've invested uh, in a high-growth uh, you know, listed vehicle or um, you know, private company or etc., uh, what effectively would have uh, happened is that, say, uh, in year 15 or year 20, your, the value of your total investment, bearing in mind you only invested 500,000, is, say, a million rand. So mm-hmm. your capital gain would have been another 500,000 rand. Sure. That entire 500,000 rand is totally tax-free to you. So you don't bearing have to pay mind, any... There's no... They have capital gains tax. So right. uh, anybody that, in the ordinary course of business, would have made a capital gain, that would have been subject to, to some form of... Uh, taxation. The other beauty of the TSA is that any dividends or income that is generated you know, from the underlying investment uh, product is also taxable. And as we know, the, uh, there's an inclusion rate for interest and, and dividend taxes in South Africa as well. So, so you get three uh, very lucrative uh, tax uh, breaks and tax opportunity savings in terms of dividends, income on uh, uh, interest or profit, profit shares from Sharia compliance sort of investments and then also the saving on any potential capital gains taxes as well. So, the, but the, the real benefit of the tax-free saving account is to be had at the end of the term of the investment, whereas when you're investing into a retirement annuity or a pension fund, the benefit is, is had at the beginning. That's right, uh, to an extent. Uh, so, uh, as I say, you know, what the taxman giveth, you always take it as well at some <laughs> point. So... Uh, for retirement products, you know, the, the tax break is on the contribution, but where they get you is on the, uh, on the withdrawal because uh, that's typically where the taxes then come in as well. So, I mean, obviously I don't know if we want to go into that discussion, but there's obviously tax implications for when you are at retirement age or want to withdraw from uh, pension or provident funds uh, in particular. Yeah, I think With, just, just discuss the brief principle of the one-third, two-third uh, kind of scenario. Yeah, so, so effectively what that means is that uh, if you are retirement age, um, you are allowed to uh, take up to a third uh, of your, uh, your, your lump sum uh, as a tax-free uh, benefit. Uh, the remaining two-thirds, uh, and there's obviously tax implications as well, but you also, uh, in terms of retirement annuity funds, you are also required to invest in what they call an annuity. So this is effectively, uh, you roll up your, your capital gain into a product that will pay you a monthly pension, uh, effectively. So again, the, the rationale is that government has looked at, you know, what has happened to people that are at retirement age. A lot of them haven't saved enough or, you know, don't have sufficient sort of uh, pension assets to secure a, a substantial pension uh, in terms of a monthly pension withdrawal. So by mandating that two-thirds of your capital in terms of retirement annuity fund has to go into a, a, um, a living annuity or, uh, you know, a similar structure to that, uh, it ensures that people at least augment their monthly income with, uh, with the retirement annuity uh, benefit as well. Mr. Davids, uh, looking at the retirement annuities and the tax-free savings account, what are some of the allowable underlying assets? So, again, a, a very good question. So, you know, in terms of the re- retirement annuity products, um, you know, there is a pension fund act that actually mandates what can be invested. Uh, and in particular, um, there's a schedule or regulation called Regulation 28 uh, that specifies, you know, how your retirement savings uh, can be invested. Uh, so you need to invest in a Regulation 28 compliant product. Uh, and typically in a South African context, uh, it would comprise what they would call um, balance funds. 
So these are funds that are uh, unit trusts that, or typically in the form of unit trusts, that invest uh, across the various asset classes from equities uh, to uh, income yielding assets like property or sukuks or uh, conventional bonds or conventional uh, investors as well. Okay. Um, Abdul, you spoke earlier about the fact, and, and we, we all agree, that the earlier in life you start saving, the better chance you have of reaching your savings goal uh, towards the end of your period so you don't have to stretch out your hands to the government or to, to, your, to your children to, to ask for a monthly income uh, and you're self-sufficient. There is also another factor that influences the investment payout at the end of time, and that obviously is the growth on the investment. So it's, it's critically imperative that one chooses um, an investment manager or an asset manager that is performing and performing consistently over, over a period of time. Now, we all know we've been through 2020 and we've had COVID, uh, and COVID has influenced investments, uh, lockdowns uh, throughout the world, etc. So even if you're investing in foreign assets, you would have been affected. But I read with interest, and I, and I was going through some numbers earlier today, and uh, your flagship uh, Sharia Compliant Fund, the Kakiso Islamic Equity Fund, on a, on a six-month basis, it's showing a return of, of 23%, uh, on a one-year basis at 19%, and that's, that's phenomenal, considering the, the, the period that we've lived through. So congratulations to you once again. I know you've won another Raging Bull Award this year. You've won many Raging Bull Awards the previous year, which is um, the, um, I mean, for all the hard work that you've put in. Um, but certainly, they, they must be something that you're doing right that can, can lead to this consistent performance. Uh, you want to take us through some of the, the backgrounding? Um, yeah, shukran for that, Anwar. And uh, obviously, it's always quite pleasing to generate good performance for our clients. Uh, and certainly, I think, you know, from the, the March volatility that we saw last year, I mean, markets uh, declined by about 35% uh, as we went into the hard lockdown. Um, I mean, the one-year anniversary is coming up next, next month uh, of the, the, the hard lockdown that we saw. But there's, but there's been a strong recovery. Update. There's been a strong so, recovery. Yes, we've seen a very strong recovery. And uh, I think part of that recovery has been uh, the stock selections that we've had in our, in our funds. Uh, most notably in some of the resources companies, uh, but certainly some other companies have done particularly well uh, as well, like Omnia, for example. So, so certainly I think uh, in, in a market that there's seen such significant volatility, and I think we've been in the fortunate position that many of our senior investment team members uh, have lived through many of these market cycles. Uh, I mean, we've got uh, combined over 160 years of investment experience. So we always knew that, you know, with a, a significant decline in markets, there would be a rebound, especially given the economic backdrop globally. We governments have obviously substantially stimulated the economies, uh, you know, interest rates, global interest rates at, at record low levels. So the environment is quite conducive for uh, strong equity uh, equity returns uh, as well. Okay, um, Imran Mullah is, uh, is smiling broadly because he says that uh, part of your performance is due to the fact that he did research into the right companies while he was working for you in Cape Town. I did, I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> we trained him well. We certainly trained him well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Okay. David, uh, let's take a closer look at Kahiso for a little while for the few minutes that we do have left. Um, in terms of the retirement annuities and tax-free savings account, on, from a Sharia perspective, what does Kahiso have on offer? Uh, very good question. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, most of our funds are available, um, you know, in the tax-free savings uh, vehicles. Um, so, you know, starting from our um, uh, conservative funds, which is the Islamic High Yield Fund. So, this fund is particularly, you know, um, attractive for people that are focused on uh, capital protection and capital preservation, and are looking to augment the pensions or monthly income with, um, you know, a high-yielding investment. So, uh, and certainly, you know, the fund has been doing very well over the last year. It's actually outperformed quite a few of the other balance funds uh, as well. Um, so that would be the first fund, uh, and then our moderate uh, to higher sort of uh, fund, the Islamic Balance Fund, and then also our Islamic Equity Fund, and also our Global Feeder Fund would be available as tax-free savings vehicles. Uh, so really the choice is up to the in, in individual investor in terms of how they want. And, and typically for, you know, tax-free savings uh, accounts, you, uh, you don't have to worry about the tax implications. So 
So you can really go to town in terms of selecting the appropriate funds uh, for that. Um, and then on the retirement fund spectrum, uh, I think the good news is that our funds are available on most platforms that are offering retirement funds or, uh, you know, retirement savings products. Um, and a lot of those platforms have access to our Islamic Balance Fund, uh, and even our uh, Islamic High Yield Fund uh, is available on some of those platforms as well. Okay. Uh, when talking about the Islamic High Yield Fund, obviously we've seen a, a period where where interest rates in the country have come down quite considerably. Would that have an impact on the returns from the Islamic High Yield Funds or whatever we would term the income funds? Uh, yes, uh, certainly it would. Um, as I've mentioned, so the, uh, I'll just explain how the income fund works. Right. So the income fund uh, is mandated to only have a maximum of about 10% in traditional equities, uh, although it can invest up to 25% in property or listed property companies or, or REITs uh, in South Africa. Uh, the rest of the fund has to be invested uh, in what we would term the cooks. Um, and in South Africa, you know, these uh, effectively just your uh, conventional banks with the Islamic windows that are offering sukuks. Um, and a lot of the sukuks in South Africa are priced off, uh, you know, uh, what they would call, call the yield curve. Uh, so in March last year, uh, quite a few of, uh, you know, the sukuks were yielding quite attractive rates. But in response to the weaker economy, uh, the Reserve Bank has cut interest rates by 3.5%. Uh, so commensurately, most of the cook rates have declined by a similar quantum uh, as well. So to the point where on one year, the cooks, uh, you know, you're struggling to beat inflation. Um, so the challenge for us as uh, income fund managers is to try and uh, best optimize between the, the, the lower yield versus the longer duration, typically. We certainly think that we've managed to do some of that by locking in quite substantial uh, and uh, much higher yields albeit for longer duration, uh, just before the rates started to come down. So certainly for investors in our fund, uh, they should still benefit from a, an average yield that is better than what uh, you should, what you would get out uh, on a one-year basis from conventional sukuks uh, as well. Yes, and, and again, uh, due to the fact that, that interest rates have come down so considerably, many people were using the Islamic windows at traditional banks, for example, the, the FNBs of this world, and those uh, returns have come down quite significantly. When you look at some of those returns now, they look look pretty horrendous. So I'm sure there must be a flight of funds away from those type of products more into the income type of funds that you are offering. Yes, we've certainly seen that. Uh, I mean, our income fund has seen significant growth uh, in the last year. Um, but uh, this is actually a global phenomenon. I mean, if you're looking at what's happening in the U.S., we, the interest rates, uh, the benchmark 10-year treasuries, uh, when below 1%, for example, um, if you're an income investor, uh, there's very little opportunity for you to get even close to 1% uh, in any sort of uh, savings vehicle in the U.S. So, so a lot of those investors have been pushed into the equity market in search of both capital growth and a bit of yield. Um, and that's also why equity markets have you know, been quite on a tear of late and have done it particularly well over the last couple of months. Absolutely. Abdul, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Always interesting talking to you. And hopefully we get you into the studio when you're in Durban the next time. And I know you haven't been for a while. But, um, yeah, the, the, the wave, the second wave seems to be lifting and uh, travel is becoming a little bit more easier and more acceptable. So we hope to have you back, back in Durban shortly and in the studio with us. And once again, we congratulate you and Kakiso for, for the sterling performance you've put in. We thank you for talking to us on retirement savings and retirement savings, uh, tax savings measures. And we all look forward to the budget again tomorrow. Uh, fantastic. Thank you very much. And I'll certainly take you up on that offer to visit Durban again. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, lovely having Abdul on the line with us, Imran, uh, your ex-boss. Yeah, always nice chatting to Mr. Davids. Very insightful and very knowledgeable definitely one of the better bosses i've had <laughs> no offense <laughs> ah, okay okay uh yeah but um yeah i look forward to meeting him in person once again lovely um we've got a few messages uh, to be read uh, and the first one is a congratulatory message to the metrics of 2020 from the minara chamber of commerce so let me just read this out it says the minara chamber of Co commerce Exec executives and board of directors congratulate the class of 2020 Despite the challenges of 2020, you have achieved your goals. Stay committed and focus on as the real test of life begins now as a young, young adult. 
To those who are not able to complete metric due to challenges, do not despair. Keep trying and remain committed. Do not take this as a failure, but an opportunity to try again and succeed. The world needs young visionaries working together to make our world a better place. Wishing you all the best in your future. And that comes to you from the Board of Directors of the Minara Chamber of Commerce. A lovely message there. Then we also need to talk a little bit about uh, a webinar, and that's going to be uh, held a, a budget speech analysis seminar. And this is uh, uh, online, and it's on the 25th of February at 10 a.m., and it's on the Zoom platform. And the guest speakers are Michael Hewson and Mrs. Yasmin Suleiman. Yasmin, we know well. She's going to be with us in the studio next week. So if you missed that, then hear Yasmin next week. I'm sure she'll have lots to say about the budget tomorrow. And if you want to join that Zoom seminar, seminar it's on uh, platform Zoom. And you can find out more from the offices of the Minaria Chamber of Commerce. Um, so, yeah, two exciting speakers there. And uh, we'll be back next week, uh, Tuesday, and uh, we'll be discussing the budget with Yasmin. So One of the most exciting shows of the year. It is always the most exciting, and Yasmin always puts it across um, bluntly, but in a nice way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so hopefully we're not going to be taxed to debt, and uh, there's some pleasant surprises in store for us tomorrow, but I'm not holding my breath. Uh, we've been through a tough year, and I think this uh, country needs to raise as money, much money as they can. So, Abdul Ramdani, thank you for being with us. And inshallah, we'll see you again next week. And with that, it's wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Radio Alan Sar Podcasts.